Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 2 and moving ahead with the next technique is decision testing from the chapter 2 that is white box test techniques. We do understand that these techniques were covered as a part of foundation level certification and of course I won't be going deeper into the basic concepts in just to concentrate uh, the most important part which will be important for you to answer a question at the advanced level. So there is a card on the top and you can refer to that video once again in order to recall and brush up your foundation skills with respect to decision testing. To understand a little more I would be actually doing that here a little bit of brush up not not everything in detail so you can refer that video for more details. So generally when it comes to white box testing techniques uh, structure becomes the basis to apply this technique at any point of time and uh, all you have with you is a code which will be provided to you in the examination as well which you need to convert into the flowchart and determine how many decisions are available. When you have the list of decision or count of decision, you need to basically find out the number of paths required to cover all the decisions in the uh, diagram or flowchart which you create. Now this diagram will be actually a rough work for you. So it's up to you how neatly or how uh, well determined diagram you create. So here is a diagram example where you see that the boxes are basically called as notes or statement which we covered in the previous tutorial. And this tutorial we are covering the branches or decisions which are the arrows or the state uh, list or the lines which are there in the diagram. So what exactly is decision testing or coverage? The definition is, is a measure of the number of executable decisions in a source code exercised by the test. So that means how many tests you have or the test which you have created, how many decisions are covered by that divided by total number of decisions. That's how you measure a decision coverage. Additionally, just to tell you more about path quickly from the basics, you already know that, but yes, a path is something which is an executable uh, way or path which reaches the end of the code starting from the start point of the flowchart. Now here, quickly, I'm trying to take a sample example at the advanced level. So advanced level basically requires you to deal with more complex programs where foundation level now does not deal with any kind of uh, uh, program based questions from white box testing technique thus here it is going to be more complicated when compared to foundation level so this is one of the typical type and the other one which i shown you in the statement testing as well so this type of program will be given to you which will have multiple if conditions nested together and quite complicated to just check your skill set and understanding on that so considering the given example here, we will be actually trying to understand that how exactly uh, decision coverage can be measured or probably how many test cases are required to have 100% decision coverage. So considering the given example here, we have this flowchart created and obviously that will be easy for you to know how this flowchart is actually created by just following the simple program. But yes, it is really important to understand how you can actually derive number of test cases for 100% decision coverage. The very first and important point is that you must cover all the branches in the given diagram. So the branches are the one which are represented by green arrows and we have to cover all the branches or decisions. So to start with, I'm following a true path which is on both the cases true and then coming out like this. So I got one path which covers the outer edge of it and covering the true conditions. The next one is going inside because we do have to cover all the possible branches here in the flowchart. So we got so far two. But you do see on the left side there are a lot of decisions which are not covered. So you must find out the paths to cover that as well. And again if we go like this we have a path covered there and maximum decisions are now covered but still there is a part of it which is still not covered. So you would need another one path in order to have 100% decision coverage. So now if you see with four paths we have covered all decisions in this diagram and there's not such any decision or branch which is remaining to be covered as a part of this. So that's the approach which basically helps you to define what is the decision coverage or number of decision or number of test cases required for 100% decision coverage. Do not get deviated 
with respect to the statements provided here and do not start covering the statement. Many ways for this kind of example, the statement and decision, both test cases will be same. So that's what you need to take care of. Now that you understood with this example that minimum test cases for 100% decision coverage here is equal to 4, I would also like to introduce you to the tip which you also know it from foundation if you followed my tutorials there. The tip is a shortcut in order to get your answer quickly without wasting much of your time. So instead of uh, creating this flowchart and deriving your answer and probably generally people go wrong while creating the diagram or probably finding out the possible paths. So you may use this tip here, which is a shortcut formula to get your answer. That is when you have nested ifs like this, you can apply number of if plus one as the answer for minimum test cases for 100% decision coverage. So here, if you see in the program, we have got one, two, three ifs and well plus one will give you the answer for the number of test cases required for 100% decision coverage. So no matter you use the approach of control flow or you use the approach of this formula, which will save a lot of your time in order to get the right answer within no time. So it is very important if you can remember this, this will save a lot of your time during the examination and also help you to get the right answer during the examination. So team, that's all from this particular tutorial. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. I'll be getting back to you with the next technique on this chapter, so stay tuned for that. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.